Solving trigonometric equations. A trigonometric equation is an equation that involves a trigonometric function. We're going to start in this first example by determining whether theta equals pi over 6 is a solution to the given equation sine theta equals 1 half. So when we have an equation, we're looking for solutions. And on this first one, we're simply asked to check or verify whether pi over 6 makes this equation true. So we're going to start by substituting in pi over 6 for theta. So sine of pi over 6, does that equal 1 half? Question mark. So when we plug in pi over 6 to sine, we absolutely get out 1 half. So I'm going to erase the question mark and put check. So what does that mean? That means theta equals pi over 6 is a solution. That was the first question. The second question is, are there any others? Are there any other solutions? How many are there? Well, this answer of pi over 6 was the angle from quadrant 1 that solved this trigonometric equation, but I know there's at least one other angle on 0 to 2 pi that will make uh, sine equal 1 half. So one of the angles had to be in quadrant 1, that was pi over 6, but the other angle comes from quadrant 2 where sine is also positive. So we get 5 pi over 6, the one with a reference angle of pi over 6. So sine of 5 pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So 5 pi over 6 is also a solution. But that's not uh, the only additional answer. So those are the two answers on 0 to 2 pi, but if we aren't given a restriction, there are technically infinitely many solutions because we can continue to add 2 pi to each of these to find coterminal angles. So in other words here, this would be uh, 12 pi over 6, so we'd get 13 pi over 6. That would work as well. If I substitute 13 pi over 6 into sine, we get out a half. Here, again, we're adding 12 pi over 6, so that's 17 pi over 6. We could just continue to add and subtract copies of 2 pi, and that will give us infinitely many solutions. So just to recap, yes, pi over 6 is a solution. Are there any others? Yes, on 0 to 2 pi, there's also 5 pi over 6, but in general, how many are there? There are infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. In this example, let's go ahead and solve a trig equation. Solve 2 cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. First, we'll solve this on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, and we'll leave our answers exact. If I look at this trig equation, it only has one trig function in it, cosine theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate cosine theta. We're going to subtract the 1 and divide by 2. So we have 2 cosine theta equals negative 1, or cosine theta is equal to negative 1 half. And we're solving this on 0 to 2 pi, the entire unit circle. Now here, just to reinforce that there are two answers, we can go ahead and look at quadrants 2 and 3, where cosine is negative, and we can find those two angles where cosine, the x value, is negative 1 half. So we have negative 1 half occurs at the angle 2 pi over 3. We're sticking to radians because our interval was given in radians. And then over here, we have negative 1 half as the x value corresponding to 4 pi over 3. So our two angles on 0 to 2 pi are theta equals 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. When we solve equations, we typically write our answers in braces. So I'm going to go ahead and put 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 in order from least to greatest in my braces or set notation. Now, in part B, we're asked to go a little bit further and find all solutions. Well, we've already really done the hard work in part A when we found the solutions uh, from 0 to 2 pi. So all we're going to do here is realize that to find all the other solutions, we would add copies 
and subtract copies of 2 pi n. So what that's going to look like is we're still going to use set notation. So we're going to have braces. We're going to have 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. We're going to have 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And we have to state that n is an integer. Integer meaning positive or negative uh, whole number, including 0, which gets us our original answer. So here, this is adding 2 pi, uh, 4 pi, 6 pi, or subtracting 2 pi if I let n equal negative 1. Uh, or negative 2, we'd subtract 4 pi. So this is how we're going to write our generic answers uh, when we're asked to find all solutions. So we really just need um, our original answers on 0 to 2 pi, and then we're saying, yeah, but just keep adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi, and that's going to give you all the possible solutions, as there are infinitely many. Now let's look at a different example. We're going to solve the equation sine theta times tangent theta equals sine theta, first on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, and then for all solutions. Now this one's different because it involves more than one trig function, so we're going to start to talk a little bit about strategy. One of the big things that happens here that we're not allowed to do is that some students want to divide both sides by sine theta. Now we're not allowed to do that, so I'm going to write that note off to the side. We cannot divide by sine theta. And that applies to any uh, trig function, or really in algebra, any variable. So I'm never allowed to divide both sides of an equation by a variable, because what happens is that we can lose solutions, and that's exactly what would happen here. So we cannot divide by sine theta. It has a variable in it. So if there was, let's say, a number in front, like a 3 and a 3, we can divide both sides by 3. But we can never divide by a variable because that causes the potential to divide by 0. So we can't divide out the signs, so what strategies do we have? The strategies that we have, or the one that we're going to employ here, is factoring. We're going to go ahead and subtract the sine theta to the other side to set it equal to 0, and then factor. So we have sine theta tangent theta minus sine theta equals 0. And now I can factor out a sine theta from each term. There are two terms here. So I'm going to factor out a sine theta, and what would be left is going to be a tangent theta from the first term minus 1 from the second term and then equals 0. Now I'm using the zero product property. So whenever I have a product equal to 0, that means that I can set each factor equal to 0. So sine theta equals 0, and tangent theta minus 1 is equal to 0. So I have two separate trig equations to solve now that only have one trig function. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve, well, when does sine theta equal 0? So what are the angle or angles I have to plug in to sine to get out 0? So remember, sine is the y value. So that's going to occur at 0, so theta equals 0, and at the angle pi. So when I plug in 0 into sine, the y value is 0. When I plug in pi, on the far left of the unit circle, that y value is also 0. So these two values solve this first part. And then secondly, I have to solve tangent theta equals negative 1. So I'm going to add the 1 to the other side. When does tangent theta equal 1? So we have, again, some experience solving these smaller ones here in previous chapters. So when does tangent theta equal 1 in two uh, different quadrants, tangent is positive, in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 3. And that reference angle that we're going to use is pi over 4. So the two answers are theta equals pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So these uh, four angles here 
are the ones that solve the original equation from 0 to 2 pi. We'll go ahead and list all four of those answers in set notation. So starting with the smallest is 0, then pi over 4, then 5 pi over 4, and pi. Now we need to go ahead and find all solutions. Well, before I write this out, I actually want to sketch where these angles are on the unit circle. So if I go ahead and sketch my angles, my 0 and pi are quadrantal angles, and then I also have pi over 4, which is in quadrant 1, and 5 pi over 4 directly across from that uh, in quadrant 3. So here, I want us to just notice something. So let's focus on the 0 and pi. They are exactly uh, pi away from each other. So this I would add pi to get to that next piece. Now, when I'm thinking about writing out all solutions, one of the things that I could do is I could say 0 plus 2 pi n. So that first value, and then just keep adding 2 pi to find all the coterminal angles. And then I could do the same thing for pi as well, so keep adding copies of 2 pi. But the other more concise way I can write this, because 0 and pi are exactly pi away, and then to find the next value, I would add another copy of pi, I can instead write my answer as 0 plus just pi n. That will give me all the same values. So 0, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, all of those will work. So instead of putting 0 plus 2 pi n and pi plus 2 pi n, that's really repetitive. That's redundant. So I'm just going to put 0 plus pi n. That takes care of these two angles. And then notice that the same thing happens. Let me clear this out so that we can see it clearer. The same thing happens between uh, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. They are exactly pi apart. So I can go ahead and write this in a more condensed way. I could write 0 plus pi n and then pi over 4 plus pi n where n is an integer. So this would be a more condensed way of writing it um, because they happen to be exactly pi units apart. So if they were not pi units apart, so if I had one answer uh, in quadrant 2 and the other answer in quadrant 3, I would have to just put plus 2 pi n on both. But because these uh, sets of answers were exactly pi apart, I could go ahead and write all solutions in a more condensed In this example, we have solve tangent squared x minus tangent x equals 2 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so here I have uh, the same trig function, but these cannot be combined together. So these are two different terms, tangent squared minus tangent x. Uh, so I can't get just one trig function sort of by itself by combining these. So one of the next things that students try to do, so another warning here, is since they see a tangent in each of them, they attempt to factor it out. So I'll show it, although it is not the correct thing to do. They'll take out a tangent x and then be left with tangent x minus 1 equals 2. And you might be thinking, but isn't this what we just did a second ago? What's the problem? The problem is the 2. I cannot set factors equal to anything other than zero. That's the zero product property. So I have a product, but it's not set equal to zero. So that's not the strategy that we employ on this one. We cannot do that. So what we have to do instead is we have to subtract the two to the other side and set it equal to zero. Tangent squared x minus tangent x minus two equals zero. And now this left side can be factored. So I have something squared minus that same thing minus 2. So it should look like a quadratic to you. Uh, if it doesn't, then we can use a substitution to help see it. Let's say let u equal tangent x. Then this becomes u squared minus u minus 2 equals 0. 
Anywhere there was a tangent, I replaced it with a u. So now I'm going to factor this. If this is clearer to see that this factors, then we can go ahead and do this substitution. And it will factor to a u and a u. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 2 and add together to give us negative 1. So we're going to have minus 2 and plus 1. So now those values of u, if I solve each one, I get u equals 2 and u equals negative 1. Sometimes people stop and say these are the two answers. But that is incorrect because u was equal to tangent x. So we need to bring that trig function back into the mix. So we have tangent x equals 2 and tangent x equals negative 1. So we have to solve these two smaller equations. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and work on tangent x equals negative 1 first. So this is sort of a typical type of problem in the sense that there is an angle we can think of uh, on the unit circle, too, in fact, that you can substitute into tangent and get out negative 1. Well, the reference angle is pi over 4, and to get out a negative for tangent, I need to be in quadrants 2 and 4. So those two angles for x are going to be uh, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. That's where my two answers are going to be. So I'm just going to go ahead over here and sort of quickly sketch um, what angles we're talking about here. So we're over here, 3 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4 are the values that give us out negative 1 because remember that all students take calculus so tangent is negative in quadrants 1 and 4. Alright so now how do we solve tangent x equals 2? We don't know what angle we plug into tangent to get out 2 but we do know that this is possible. Let's start with that fact because the range of tangent, regular tangent, is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. So tangent can equal 2, uh, and since that's positive, it's going to happen in quadrants 1 and 3. So it's some angle, right? So this x value does exist. So this angle x, I'm going to go ahead and plop it over here in quadrant 1. So we'll go ahead and call this angle x, and there's another angle with the reference angle x over here in quadrant 3. So we're going to be looking for this big angle here that gets me over to the reference angle. So we're in search of these two angles here. So to find this value of x, we can go ahead and take tangent inverse of both sides. So we can go ahead and say that uh, x is equal to tangent inverse of 2. So remember, to find the angle, we can use tan inverse, but tan inverse is a function. It only gives us one answer. So by doing this, we're only finding this one angle in quadrant 1, because um, remember, tan inverse comes from quadrants 1 and 4. So it's giving me this angle in quadrant 1. This angle is tan inverse of 2. Whoops. Tan inverse of 2. Uh, but what's this angle over here? So we're limited by using this tan inverse to find x. That's only going to give us one answer, and we know there's a second one. We have to know there's a second one because there's another place tangent is positive. So the way to find that second angle is to recognize that it would be adding 180 because of what quadrant is in to that value of x. So it's 180, or pi, um, plus this little amount x here. So in other words, that whole angle is going to be, so let me erase this part, this whole big angle here is going to be that value of x plus pi. So I'm going to write pi plus tan inverse of 2. So that's this big angle here. So pi plus the little reference angle tan inverse of 2. Now we don't always add pi. We're adding pi in this particular case because the angle is in quadrant 3. So we have tan inverse of 2, that's one of the answers, and the other answer 
uh, is pi plus tan inverse of 2. And these answers are exact answers. We could, if asked, plug these into our calculator to approximate the value. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and leave our answers as exact answers. Sometimes people think the exact answer is plugging it into a calculator. It's not. That's an approximation. These two are the exact answers. And then we had these other two that solve tangent x equals negative 1. So let's put all four answers uh, in set notation here uh, in order from least to greatest. Now, in order from least to greatest means around the unit circle in that counterclockwise direction. So the first angle would be tan inverse of 2. The next one would be 3 pi over 4. Then pi plus tan inverse of 2. And then finally, if I can fit it in, 7 pi over 4. So those are uh, my four answers. In this example, we're going to solve cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals 0 on the interval from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So still on the unit circle, our answers are just going to be in degrees this time. So here we have two different trig functions involved. Uh, we cannot combine them together. And because they're two different trig functions, we can't factor anything out here. Uh, we can't subtract anything to the other side because we already have a zero going on. So what we're going to go ahead and do on this example is use a trig identity. When we start to see sine squared and cosine squared, we should be thinking our Pythagorean identities. So recall that we have sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So let's say I want to replace cosine squared x. I'm going to subtract sine squared x to the other side. So an equivalent identity is that cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So let's go ahead and make that replacement here. We're going to replace cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. So we have 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x equals 0. Now here, minus sine squared x minus sine squared x is negative 2 or minus 2 sine squared x equals 0. And this helped us because now we have all the same uh, trig function. We have just one trig function. So I want to try to get that by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 1 to the other side, so negative 2 sine squared x equals negative 1. Divide by negative 2, so I'm at sine squared x equals positive 1 over 2. Well, I want just sine by itself. So to get rid of the squared, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I have sine x, the square root will get rid of the squared, and then I'm going to have the square root of 1 over 2. But remember what comes out is plus or minus. Plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. Or that's sine x equals plus or minus 1 over radical 2. I'm taking the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Well, 1 over radical 2, that's radical 2 over 2. So we have sine x is equal to plus or minus rad 2 over 2. And now we're talking, now we're getting somewhere. So we have actually two separate equations that comes from uh, once I try to solve for sine it by itself, I got two separate equations out. So let's look at each equation separately. Here they are. We have sine x equals positive rad 2 over 2 and sine x equals negative rad 2 over 2. So each of these solved on 0 to 360 uh, is going to give us two answers. So sine is positive rad 2 over 2, sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, uh, with the reference angle 45 degrees. So we're looking at 45 degrees and 135 degrees. So we have x equals 45 degrees and 135 degrees. For sine to be negative rad 2 over 2, we have to be in the bottom two quadrants. So we're looking at 225. 
and 315, also with a reference angle of 45 degrees. So we have x equals 225 degrees and 315 degrees. So we're looking at these uh, four angles here. So they are already in order here. From least to greatest, 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 225 degrees, and 315 degrees. So this was an example where I could use identities. Uh, I would say that an alternate strategy that you can use, and this is just if you're really familiar with and understand the unit circle, is if you think about adding the sine squared x to the other side, so I'll just sort of draw a line here. If you think about where is cosine squared x equal to sine squared x, uh, what are the angles that we can plug into uh, both sine and cosine, if you think about it like this, uh, what are the angles, that, what's the angle we can plug into sine and cosine that gives us the same exact value? Because uh, we can see they equal one another. So we can see how when we plug in, let's say 45 degrees, sine and cosine are the same. So rad 2 over 2 and rad 2 over 2. Here, 135 degrees, if we look at sine and cosine, they're both radical 2 over 2, but they're not exactly the same. One's negative and one's positive. But if you look at what's happening to sine and cosine in the equation, they're being squared. And squaring things makes everything positive. So that's why it doesn't matter that one's negative and one's positive. So down here in quadrant 3, they're the same value and they have the same sign. Down here in quadrant 4, the same value and they have opposite signs. But the opposite signs don't matter because we're squaring each piece. So I would say on this example, it's perfectly acceptable to write this out and really think about the unit circle and have that really good understanding of the unit circle. If we want a more formal way to do it, we can absolutely use identities uh, and get down to a place where we're just solving uh, one trig equation equals a value. Uh, to really convince ourselves these are the four answers. But I. In this example, I want to solve tangent x plus square root of 3 equals secant squared x on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So in this example, notice we have two different trig functions here. Uh, so we're not going to be able to just like isolate one trig function, be able to solve uh, for our answers. We're going to need to start to think about how can we relate tangent and secant together uh, with our identities? And the identity that should be jumping out at us is the Pythagorean identity tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x, which has the trig function squared, but my equation doesn't. But what I can do is, in an equation, whatever I do to one side, I can do to the other. So I can start this problem by squaring both sides. Now, in doing so, though, a quick warning, if I square both sides, I might be creating extraneous solutions in this process. So I will, at the end, when I get a solution set, I will have to check my answers. But we are going to move forward. This is how we proceed with the problem. Now, when we square both sides, on the left side, I cannot distribute the exponent because of this addition that's here. So I'm stuck multiplying out 10x plus rad 3 times tan x plus rad 3 is equal to secant squared x. So when I distribute, tangent times tangent is tangent squared x. Now outer is radical 3 tan x. Inner is radical 3 tan x for a total of two copies of radical 3 tangent x. And then rad 3 times rad 3 is 3. And they're both positive, so plus 3 is equal to secant squared x. Okay, so now look what we have. We have tangent squared x, a tangent x, and we have the secant squared x over here. And this is what's out of place, right? I have now uh, two terms that involve tangent, but I don't want to involve secant squared. So let's replace secant squared with tangent squared x plus 1. Remember, we wanted to use this identity. So we have tangent squared x plus 2 rad 3 tan x plus 3 is equal to tangent squared x plus 1. 
Now what's great here is that the tangent squared x's are going to cancel because if I subtract it to the other side, these are gone. And then what I'm going to do is try to isolate my one trig function. Now I have just one trig function involved, tangent. So to get it by itself, I'm going to subtract the 3 to the other side. So I have 2 rad 3 tan x is equal to negative 2. Then I'll divide by 2 rad 3. So we have tan x is equal to negative 2 over 2 rad 3. The 2 over 2's cancel. So I have tangent x is, uh, whoops, x is equal to negative 1 over rad 3, uh, or rad 3 over 3 with a negative in front. So now this is straightforward to solve, right? Where is tangent uh, negative? So there's two quadrants where tangent is negative. Let's draw a little... Uh, xy plane here for a second. So tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. And the reference angle here, what angle do I plug into tangent to get out rad 3 is pi over 6. So in quadrant 2, the angle with the reference angle of pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. And in quadrant 4, the, uh, whoops, didn't want to straighten out my line here. The angle in quadrant 4 with the reference angle of pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6. So we have uh, two possible solutions of x equals uh, 5 pi over 6 and x equals 11 pi over 6. Now, why am I saying possible solutions? Uh, because when we squared both sides, it's possible we created an extraneous solution, one that doesn't work on the original equation. So we actually have to check and we have to check both values. So we're going to plug 5 pi over 6 into the original problem. So tangent 5 pi over 6 plus rad 3, does that equal, so I'm going to put a little question mark here, secant of 5 pi over 6. So tangent of 5 pi over 6 is negative rad 3 over 3. We just established that. Uh, and then plus rad 3, does that equal uh, secant of 5 pi over 6, that's 1 over cosine of 5 pi over 6, which is 1 over uh, negative radical 3 over 2, um, which is negative 2 over rad 3. So then here, what is this equal? So if I uh, multiply the top and bottom of this radical 3 by a 3, so here and here, then I'm going to get positive 2 rad 3 over 3. So this is positive 2 radical 3 over 3, because this is negative 1 rad 3, this is positive 3 rad 3. When I add across the numerator, I get positive 2 rad 3 over 3. So I have positive uh, equaling a negative, so that's not possible, right? So we were like questioning this, so no, positive 2 rad 3 over 3 does not equal negative 2 over rad 3. Uh, even if we rationalize this, it'd be negative 2 rad 3 over 3, but one's positive and one's negative. So that means that 5 pi over 6 is not a solution. 5 pi over 6 is not a solution. Um, however, 11 pi over 6 is actually going to check out. So if we do tangent of 11 pi over 6 plus rad 3 equals secant of whoops 11 pi over 6. So this one is going to uh, give us uh, negative rad 3 over 3 still plus rad 3. So we did that work. That's 2 rad 3 over 3. But this time we get 1 over cosine of 11 pi over 6. In quadrant 4, cosine is uh, positive. So we get 1 over positive rad 3 over 2. And when we flip it, we get 2 rad 3 or 2 rad 3 over 3. So it checks out, right? So this does work out. So my solution is only 11 pi over 6. In this example, we'll solve x squared sine x minus 9 sine x equals 0 on 0 to 2 pi. So here we have two different classes of function. We have a trig function and a quadratic or a polynomial function. 
Uh, what we want to go ahead and do here is recognize that between these two terms we have a sine x in common and it's set equal to zero so we will factor it out we'll factor out sine x and be left with x squared minus 9 is equal to zero x squared minus 9 factors to x plus 3 x minus 3 so now we just set each factor equal to zero. We use the zero product property. So where does sine x equal zero? Where does x plus three equal zero? And where does x minus three equal zero? Well, the last two, right, are pretty easy. x equals negative three, x equals positive three. Uh, but where does sine x equal zero, right, on zero to two pi? Well, we know that one of the answers is at zero, sine of zero equals zero, and the other location is at pi. So if we think about the unit circle, where is the y value zero? So that's gonna happen at zero and at pi, where the x values are one and negative one, but the y values are zero. So we have zero and pi. So at quick glance, it looks like we have four solutions, but we want to be careful. We're solving this on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And negative 3 is not in that interval. It doesn't include any negative numbers. 3 is in the interval because 2 pi is about 6.28, right? Pi is 3.14. So 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. Uh, so 3 is in this interval. So I have three solutions here. I have zero, pi, and three. In this example, we wanna solve on zero degrees to 360 degrees. Leave answers exact and approximate using a calculator. So here we're solving tangent beta is equal to two. Now this isn't a value that we would know uh, from our list of familiar angles. We don't know what we plug into tangent to get out two. But we do know that there are going to end up being uh, two solutions because we know that tangent's output is positive in two quadrants. So I'm going to go ahead and draw myself a unit circle here, uh, an xy plane. And we know that tangent is positive in quadrant one and in quadrant three. So that's where we're looking for our angles, right? One over here uh, and then another one over here. So we're looking for these two angles. So what we are going to go ahead and do is we are going to uh, find beta by taking tangent inverse of both sides. So we're going to start by doing tan inverse of tangent beta equals tan inverse of 2. And so those are going to cancel out and I get beta equals tan inverse of 2 which notice is only one value. And that makes sense because tangent inverse can only yield one output. Tangent inverse is a function. It can only have one output. But we have to know that we're using inverses as a tool to find the two solutions that we know exist for solving this equation. So tangent inverse of two, if I go ahead and uh, plug that into my calculator in degree mode, then I find that that's approximately, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number here, 63 degrees. And so that's my angle in quadrant one. So I have 63 degrees um, as my approximate value. So how do I go about finding the other angle then? Well, the other angle is in quadrant three with 63 degrees as its reference angle. So this angle right here is also 63 degrees. So total to get all the way around to that one, it's gonna have to be 180 plus 63 degrees. So that's 243 degrees. So let's go ahead and write out our second value um, in as an approximate value, so we have Let's go ahead and start to label some things here. So we have our approximate answers are 63 degrees and then 243 degrees because we're adding up the 180 plus 63. So these are my approximate answers using a calculator. Now my exact answers are the ones involving tan inverse. So tan inverse of two is my exact answer for the angle in quadrant one 
But to express the angle in quadrant 3, I'm going to have to put uh, 180 degrees and then plus tan inverse of 2. So this is my exact answer uh, for the two angles. In part b here, we want to solve on 0 to 2 pi. We have sine alpha is equal to negative 0.2. And again, this is not a value that we would know, or angles we would know, where you plug them into sine and get out negative 0.2. So we're going to leave our answers exact and approximate using a calculator. So first we do know that there are going to be two solutions here because sine is negative in two quadrants. So let's go ahead and draw our xy plane and identify those two quadrants, which are quadrants 3 and 4. That's where sine is going to be negative. So we're going to have two different angles as our solutions. So one angle in quadrant 3 and then the other angle is going to be in quadrant 4. And both are going to have the same reference angle. Right? Both are going to have that same reference angle. Okay, so to start this process, we are going to go ahead and take sine inverse of both sides here. So we're going to say sine inverse of sine of alpha equals sine inverse of negative 0.2. Or, of course, we could use arc sine, the same thing, different notation. So alpha is sine inverse of negative uh, 0.2. All right, so if we substitute this into a calculator in radian mode this time, because that's what my interval is given in, I want my answers to be in radians, we are going to get negative, or approximately, negative 0.2 if I round to the nearest tenths place. Now, why am I getting out a negative answer? So remember sine inverse, the answers have to come from quadrants 1 and 4, and any answer in quadrant 4 is going to have to be the negative angle where I go in a clockwise direction. So we just found this angle right here is sine inverse of negative 0.2, which happens to be approximately negative 0.2. All right, so did we at least find one solution already? We actually haven't because we want our answers to be between 0 and 2 pi. We want them to be positive uh, angles. So first let's remember that this angle over here is 2 pi, which is approximately 6.28. Uh, so if I want the positive version of this angle, uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract uh, 0.2 from 6.28. That's going in this uh, counterclockwise direction. So in terms of approximate answers, I'm going to have uh, 6.08 as one of my answers. So 6.28 minus 0.2, that's going to give me this angle in quadrant 4. And then this little angle right here uh, has a measurement of 0.2. So I'm considering the reference angle, so I'm considering it positive. Uh, and so this value right here in radians is pi, which is approximately 3.14. So the approximate answer is going to be 3.14 plus 0.2, which is 3.34. So I'll actually put that first. So 3.34 comma 6.08 are my two approximate answers. So uh, 3.34 is this angle in radians. Remember, radians doesn't have to have um, pi in it, right? So pi is about 3.14, so if I'm 0 0.2 past that, that's 3.34. And then going all the way around, I'm just short 0.2, so that's why I'm subtracting 0.2 from 6.28. So those are the approximate answers. If we want the exact answers, um, then what we're going to go ahead and do is use um, pi, that's the exact angle here along the negative x-axis, and we're going to add to it 0.2's original value, which was sine inverse of not negative 0.2, but positive 0.2. So 0.02 is approximately sine inverse of positive 0.2. So I don't want to choose negative because negative sends me in this clockwise direction and that's what gave me a negative output. But sine inverse of positive 0.2 is going to give me the same quantity, just positive. So my exact answer is going to look like pi plus 
sine inverse of 0.2. So it's the same idea as what we did, like we added 3.14 plus 0.2. But here the exact answer is pi plus sine inverse of 0.2. This is the exact reference angle. And then to find the exact angle in quadrant four, we can go ahead and put two pi, we kind of have two options here, let's talk about them. We can put two pi minus the positive version of the reference angle. So this reference angle here is sine inverse of positive 0.2, right? Reference angles are always positive. So two pi minus sine inverse of, whoops, positive 0.2. So that's going to get us to this angle in quadrant four, or I could put two pi plus sine inverse of negative 0.2 because we know that's a negative angle. So that's like doing 6.28 plus negative 0.2. And this one's doing two pi minus 0.2. So either one gets us the same value. So it's understanding how uh, sine inverse of negative 0.2 is going to give us a negative answer because I'm going clockwise. Sine inverse of positive 0.2 is going to give us a positive angle. It's going to be the same or positive output. It's going to be the same value, just positive because it's going to be in quadrant one. So here are my approximate answers in radians. And then here are my exact answers uh, in radians.